New details are emerging tonight about the daring evacuation of nearly 100 U.S. diplomatic personnel and their families from Sudan's capital, Khartoum. It was carried out by U.S. Special Forces as two top generals and their soldiers battle for control of the country. The violence has paralyzed the nation's airports and claimed more than 400 lives. Thousands of Americans, many of them dual citizens, remain caught in the crossfire. The mission began on Saturday. Three Chinook helicopters flew from Djibouti, refueled in Ethiopia, then landed in Sudan's capital, Khartoum. After returning to Djibouti, the Americans were then flown to the U.S. military base in Ramstein, Germany. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken monitored the evacuation in Washington. CBS's MTS Tayeb is tracking developments in London and leads us off. MTS. Meg, good evening. Well, the evacuation of U.S. Embassy staff and their families has only intensified concern for the estimated 16,000 Americans who still remain trapped in Sudan as the fighting there becomes even deadlier. Heavily armed fighters from the feared Rapid Support Force paramilitary group race towards Khartoum as the battle for the capital city, now in its second week, shows no sign of ending. Despite intense international pressure for a ceasefire, the RSF's leader, General Mohamed Hamdan Degallo, remains locked in a bitter power struggle with his arch rival, General Abdel Fattah al burhan Sudan's top military chief. At least 400 people have been killed and thousands more wounded in the fighting. The fear now is Africa's third largest country is falling into civil war, a war that could trigger a humanitarian catastrophe on a scale not seen in decades. Sudan has large oil and gold deposits, a strategically located port, and neighbors, East Africa's most powerful nations, but has been politically unstable following the 2019 pro-democracy protests that led to the toppling of military dictator Omar al-Bashir. Both Burhan and Hamdan served under Bashir and seized power in a 2021 military coup, with promises of leading Sudan towards democratic civilian rule but have instead turned their vast armies against each other, with millions caught in the crossfire. Now here in Britain, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has said an evacuation involving 1,200 British forces was successful, Meg, while other countries, including France, have also stepped up efforts to evacuate its citizens. MTS Tayeb, thank you.